I'm going to go into this model here and I'm going to grab some of its faces and we're going to look at another feature inside of here which is uh, turn off our soft selection grab these and I'm just going to go ahead and just detach this grab it right there and detach it to an object and now I have two objects I have this object and I have this object so in this case if we wanted to you know change uh, the rank of this character during the game or a lot of people have different objects for um, for facial animation that they switch out uh, or uh, different body parts when when uh, characters are wounded or something like that I'm going to come in and use the uh, edit normal tools in Mac, see that we have uh, edit normals and we'll just reduce our normal size here and you can see that um, I have two normals here because I have the two objects and I have both of them have the same modifier on them so I can come into my normal mode here and I can just grab these normals and rotate them, move them, do whatever I want in this case I'll grab several of them and uh, now I can come in and do, this is a new feature called averaging and we'll say use the threshold and average selected and that's going to align these normals together and uh, you can see now that these normals have been adjusted and if I come down now and just convert these to an editable poly these changes are actually going to stay so you can see the changes that I made here this this one I didn't change and this one I did so all of these are coming around and so this is persistent when you collapse the, uh, the stack. One thing I showed you is this is one of the fixes in the patch for 6.1. So if you come in, if you go to our website and get that, then, um, then this is something that uh, the collapsing was not persistent before in 6, and it is now. So, uh, so now any changes that I come in here and make to this model, uh, I'll, be able to, I'll be able to see. Now I'm going to come in here and uh, go to Select by Channel and uh, we're just going to come in here and grab this channel and you remember how I saved that selection at the very end and at the very beginning I've done a lot of things I've detached some faces I've gone in and um, uh, uh, collapsed stuff I've gone in and uh, sliced things I've done all kinds of stuff I've repositioned the character I've totally changed this topology and, um, and in spite of all of that um, I've, I've been able to maintain this selection so now I can just come in here and collapse this guy back to an edible poly again and that selection is there I can keep that selection in the stack in that modifier and it gave me the ability to come in and uh, and choose so if we go back to select by channel here I'll choose anything that I've saved in the list so I can save all my selections so if you're doing UV unwrapping and you want to save selections for the bottoms of the hands and the tops of the hands and the front of the body and the back of the body or uh, different uh, parts of a, of a level you can save all those selections in here and then choose them one at a time and then go in and change their mapping or do whatever it is and those selections are maintained across collapsing stacks across uh, changing topology um, making you know editing changing the face count all that kind of stuff so uh, so that is uh, that's really useful as well one thing too that I didn't um, that I didn't mention is the uh, the turn to mesh that we had on here earlier that's a good way to uh, to make the poly counter show you the polys the tries when you're uh, editing an editable poly so when you have edit poly up and you go in and get the poly counter I'll come in and show you um, you'll see that you get uh, you get a different poly count here if we come into this model and put on a turn to mesh our poly count goes to the true uh, try count and so I can still work in editable poly and I can see my uh, my changes um, affecting my uh, my try count in this uh, in this model next thing that I want to show you is um, is some of the uh, the stuff for uh, texturing now this is a actually a, a file from um, Prince of Persia that I'm opening now and I have a um, I have added a lot of different uh, stuff to this uh, to this build of maps for this presentation, so you'll see you'll see some um, maybe maybe some surprises just like that one. Um, so what I've got here is I've got um, uh, Prince of Persia uh, content, and um, and this is a level. One thing that's interesting about this is that um, I have the ability to uh, to display something in the viewport some of it is wireframe and some of it is shaded if you notice um, normally you come into your viewport parameters and you say that you want it to be wireframe you want it to be shaded you want it to be you know whatever it is and the way that I've done this is because I've separated this out into layers and if we come into the, uh, the layer manager I'll open the layers again 
and here's the pillar layer here. Um, and you see I can come into the properties for these layers and I can change them. So I can say that I want them to be shaded, wireframe, bounding boxes. I can also just determine whether they're see-through or whether they're renderable or that kind of thing. So I can design my entire scene. For instance, when you're rigging a character, you put all your helpers um, you know, on one layer so that you can make them visible and invisible very, very quickly. You can, um, you can change their renderable properties. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so in this case, in Max uh, 6, also you have the ability to put your lights all on one layer, and by turning off the renderability for that layer, you actually turn off the lights. So, uh, so that's, really, that's really useful and makes uh, the workflow a lot faster. And in this case, I'm going to use this scene. One thing, too, that, is, uh, that a lot of people don't realize anymore is that something has changed with the Isolate tool. I can come in and um, grab a few objects here, and I can say that I want to isolate. And now you notice that I can isolate more than one object at the same time. So I've uh, isolated this scene. Now I can see the pillars in this scene, and I can see the floor. And I can come into my asset manager, and I can just drag in an, you know, an object for the scene. And uh, actually, I'll cancel that and turn on my auto grid. And you'll see that uh, if we merge this, I'll just use my scene materials. Now I can snap this around to the surfaces here in the scene and I can start building up a level really quickly. So um, when we come out, and I'll just go in here and unhide, we'll see I've put this in the scene. I can continue to come and, and um, use my snap tools to repeat objects, or if I have a whole series of objects here, this is just a folder on my drive. So uh, this is asset browser in a viewport. I can come in and uh, also get the, uh, let's actually grab the, material here and this is actually get the floor there and that's not a file this one highlight there we go so the difference was that this is not highlighted here in the scene but um but when this is highlighted I'm dragging textures and changing them I don't know if you can actually see that on the projector but um but it's just dragging and dropping your textures or your objects into your scene you also have eyedrop functionality in um in Max and that is uh, an Autodesk functionality. Architects use it a lot to drag and drop uh, furniture and things like that into their scenes. And you can make an entire little internal website full of assets. And so as a level editor, you can come in and build these uh, assets very quickly. Build the website with all the assets, and then you can view them, update them when the artists change them, and then just use that to build the levels. So this is a... a um, a piece of content that was created by David King. And uh, one thing that's interesting about it, if we come in here and take a look at, uh, at this, this is a quick animation. This is what one person did in three days to prototype um, a, um, a, a game design. So you can see how it's going to work, what the gameplay is going to look like what the art might look like, what the animation might look like, what the effects might look like. And uh, they used Max. This is a render from a viewport. This is a preview. So rendering a preview from a viewport, this is exactly what it looks like, uh, what it would look like in the game and what it looks like in Max. And so he, uh, he talks about how to hook up um, motion mixer and particle flow and all these kinds of tools to work together to really quickly mock up a prototype of what you're going to be doing. So you can either, you know, pitch a game design uh, or bring this to meetings and continually update this and, you know, propose different directions that you want to go.